Hello everyone, welcome to Creepy Nibs. I am Count Chuckula, and tonight we have an ink review again. And uh, this is one of my favorites. This is my, my go-to red. It's Nemesine Eolus Palace Red. Comes in this 35 milliliter bottle. Also in samples, if you get it like that. Oh, that's just... Yes. Um, I also want to mention that the camera is making this look quite a bit brighter than it is in person, but it's not the not enough to be completely inaccurate. So I'm going to do this video anyway. Here is the coloring card that I have. This you can see. This is I mean this is a pretty bright red in person. The camera is just going crazy. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, looks good. Looks good. I like it. Uh, let's compare it. I'm gonna not keep all this stuff in place. Do, 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 do. All right. Closest thing I have is Robert Oster, Direct Sun. And it is very difficult to tell the difference between the two, to be honest. Um, the Nemesine is just a little bit darker and a little tiny bit more red. Um, because this is technically an orange, but, like, looking at them close together, see if you don't have the, the names on top, you don't really know which one is which. So that's pretty neat, because I really liked Robert Oster Direct Sun when I got the sample, and their bottle, well, yeah, the bottles are, like, kind of, not expensive, but they're not as cheap as the Nemesine one. So there's that. See, I almost put the wrong one away. Here it is with Schaefer Script Red. It's not a great amount of difference either, but the Script Red is definitely more red and a little bit darker. KWZ Thief's Red, which is a lot more pink. This is a, like a warm, a cool, oh my god, this is a cool red, it's a warm red. And Diamond Red Dragon, just for reference. They're not similar at all. My camera does not like the color red. I have no idea why. Uh, so there's that chromatography. Here's the normal one. Let's zoom in if it's not going to kill anybody. Um, whoa, alright, sorry about the fluorescence of this, this ink right now. Uh, this is the regular one, the way you're supposed to do it. Um, I let it go for quite a while, that's why it's stretched out really thin. Um, but yeah, this is just a red, and then there's a band of yellow at the top that, you know, red and yellow make orange. Uh, and then here's the one I let dry, there is no difference whatsoever. And we know what that tells us. Water tests are going to be interesting. So, there's that. Pens I use for the paper tests. This Jinhao X750 with a nib that I stubbed. It's not a big stub, but it's a stub, and I made it a little wetter. Next one is this Wingsung 3003, uh, and it has a Pilot Metropolitan's fine nib. And this ink lives in this pen. Like, this is my red pen. Uh, I don't know why I don't just eyedropper it already, but... Hey, is what it is. Okay. Doot, 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 doot. Alrighty then! So, here's the first one, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Yeah, I gotta see what I can do to make this not as neon but if I can't just imagine it like a half a shade lighter so yeah this that it looks good performed really well dry times weren't the worst thing ever the fine dried in eight seconds and then the uh the 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 the, the, the stub took 28 seconds why can't I speak huh anyway so there's that there's the swatchy swatch. Kind of buckled the paper a little bit, but not too bad. 
Water test, not good. Not good. Not the worst thing ever, but if you if you wrote anything with that fine nib, you're not gonna be able to get it back. It's gone. The stub did a little bit alright, but it kind of exploded. Uh, dyed the page. No bleed, no feathering, no spread, no show through, and no sheen. You might see a little bit of a halo there, but it doesn't, I wouldn't call it sheen. So there's that. Fabriano Acolqua, which is not a paper I'm a fan of, but I like this ink on this paper. It's, it's really not bad. You can see that texture from the from the paper. The fine nib took about the same. It was a little bit shorter than the stub. Just the swatchy swatch. Just did more of those halos there, and the water test was worse than it was on the last one. That is gone. Like that is no longer visible. And that one didn't do too great either. So this ink has zero water resistance whatsoever. Um, and again, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, and no sheen. Rhodia from a dot pad, uh, 80 grams per square meter. It's not bad. It's really not bad. I'm not the biggest fan of Rhodia anymore now that I've used some other papers, but I don't dislike Rhodia because it does perform really well. Dry times were about the same, give or take a second or two. Um, it does look a little bit brighter on this paper than it does on some of the others. Water test again. Obliterated. Obliterated. Here is a tiny fragment. Oh, clear, or, oh my god, Tomoe River 68 grams per square meter paper, and this is the cream one, and I don't know if it's going to show up as well, but this looks way more red than it did on the other papers. So here's the 52 gram uh, white paper. You can see more of the red. Uh, and I love the way this swatch looks. Uh, <clears throat> if you want an ink that looks like fresh blood, this is your, this is your dude, like, yeah. So that puts the creepy and creepy nibs. Do, do, dry times were better than they were on some of the other papers. All the other papers, actually, um, except for the, the fine, but still. 18 seconds to dry. That's pretty great. Water test did as expected. It's gone. Here's the 52 gram Tomoe River paper, and this paper really brought out the orange. Don't know if it'll show up as well. And you do get a little bit of halo sheen in the, in the swatch. Dry times really weren't too bad. They weren't overextended as they sometimes can be on this paper. Water test did not do good. You can't even tell I put anything there, really. You can kind of see maybe something, but that's about it. And then, let's see. We got some show through. Like you could definitely tell there's something on the other side, and you could practically read it. And there's very near bleed in the, in the swatch down there. So that's a thing. HP Premium Laser Jet, 32 pound. There we go. It's not too bad. Not too bad. No feathering. Not really a decent amount of spread. Not enough to write home about. Um, dry times. Pretty good. Four seconds in the fine and eight in the stub. I'm happy about that. Water test. Um, it kind of exploded. Um, but it's not too bad. You can still kind of read it. 
it did better, especially in the fine nib, than it did on the other papers. And then, of course, you can't see through this. This is just, this paper is thick. Like, T-H-I-C-C, -C, thick. Here is the 20-pound copier paper that I have, and I'm wondering if I have, like, really good copy paper? Because this performs really well. There's some texture around it and it spreads, but there's no feathering. This is from a drop of water that escaped the water test. But yeah, that's really not bad. Dry times were surprising. Because it only took four seconds on the HP Premium, it took 5 seconds, and then 8 seconds here, that's double the dry times of the Premium Laser Jet Paper, so I don't know what's going on there, that definitely exploded, it's, yikes, and didn't do too bad, the paper got jacked up, and you don't really see any bleed, there's some show through a little bit, but nothing too terrible, the paper is just dead. Here it is on that really nifty Staples refill paper that I have. And it worked out pretty well on this side. 4 seconds and 15 seconds in the stub. What? How does that happen? Am I holding this straight? Because I am way over caffeinated. And water tested better than it did on some of the other papers. It's not too terrible. You could you could read it. it. Didn't dye the page too much either, which is pretty neat. I was expecting it to. And on the back, there is very near bleed in many spots. Nothing came completely through except this thing in the stub or swatch, but. That's expected. I really laid it on there, and it comes through in the water test especially. Um, but yeah, I would not write on both sides of this paper, unless I'm using something very light. And for funsies, I figured I would see how this looked on uh, black paper. So here's Vortex Motion. This is the first ink I did. This one is Pen BBS 130. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and you don't see it at all. This one, you kind of get a little bit. You can kind of see the red. It's got like a kind of, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But you can definitely see that there's something on there. So that's fun. That's always fun. Fun stuff. And finally, Maruman Nemasini. 80 gram per square meter. Let's see. Of course, it performed very well on this paper. I messed up there. That's my fault. Um, but I really like it. I always like this paper. It's amazing. Dry times were a little... No, they're about the same as it was on, like, the Clairefontaine and the Rhodia. So that's pretty cool. Swatch looks pretty nifty. Um... And water test did very bad, like bad, like naughty boy. Uh, so there's that. And I really like this ink. I don't really have anything else to say about it. So if you can, get yourself at least a sample. This is pretty nice red. Um, so I hope you had fun. I had fun. This was fun. So have a good day. Punch every Nazi. And uh, give yourself a present.